Hey, Steve Stretsky here. Welcome back to the show. Lost to touch on this week. This is going to be a great episode, so buckle in. Boy, do I have some good stories for you. Uh, so about a week or two ago, we talked about the Freudian slip that was Justin Trudeau. In an interview with the Globe and Mail on a podcast, he stated that we need housing affordability, but at the same time, we need to maintain current values. You're like, well, that's kind of a head-scratcher. We need to maintain current values because it's the boomer's largest asset class, and it's the retirement plans. So... Again, how do you get affordability if you don't allow house prices to drop, right? When you think uh, affordability, you think, well, prices need to come down. So there's really two ways to solve this. Again, it is prices to come down, number one. Or number two is you can have incomes. You get incomes growing faster than the rate of house price growth over a period of time. Um, And usually we're talking several years for that to actually see the benefits of that. One way to slow the pace of home price appreciation is to build a lot of new housing, right? So, and keep in mind, when I say build, 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 you know, no developer is going to actively build when prices are declining, okay? And it's very hard to get capital and banks don't want to lend money, et cetera. You can't get the pre-sales that you need in a down market. So there, there are those natural constraints, but if you can actually build enough housing, you can slow the rate of home price appreciation. So instead of home prices going up 10% a year, if you actually have an adequate supply of, of units coming to completion, you know, you can slow that rate from 10% a year to say 1%, 2%, 3% a year. And again, allow the incomes to outpace the growth in home prices. And so that seems to be the Trudeau government's game plan is like, okay, like we're not going to intentionally come in here and, and crush home prices and, and, and basically not get reelected. But what we're going to do is we're going to try to encourage cities and provinces to basically unleash the red tape, cut the red tape, get a whole bunch of new housing built, and slowly over time, you can restore affordability. Again, this is kind of like a, this is a 10 year plus plan, right? This does not happen overnight. And so what the government has said is we're gonna going to ask the cities to cut red tape. If you cut the red tape and basically remove restrictive zoning, so you start allowing, uh, you know, fourplexes on single family lots, you start allowing high density around transit stations, just make it easier to build housing in these provinces and cities, we will literally cut you a check, we'll cut you a check for basically removing some of this zoning. And so it's pretty interesting to see. So okay, well, you say, well, what, like, let's talk about some of the restrictions and and red tape, etc. So a developer in Toronto, Matt Young, he put a thread out on Twitter back in October in which he showed all the excess taxes and charges that the city of Toronto charges for this development, in which it equated to about 24% of the total cost of the development. 24% of the total cost of developing a new high-rise development was just government taxes and fees. Okay, so this all suddenly gets passed through to the end user. And so you say, well, okay, Trudeau says cut the red tape, ease up zoning. Um, surely this means that we're gonna we gotta start removing taxes, right? I mean, if you tax housing like cigarettes, I mean, you can you kind of know what the outcome is going to be. So let's let's get rid of that excess. And so Matt came back to Twitter uh, just just this past week with an update. And so he says, well, it's unfortunate that as of May first, development charges in the city of Toronto are going up another 20%. So they went up 20% from basically uh, over the last year. And so, you know, he shows that for a one bedroom, the co- the, the development charges, DC DC rates are going from $37,000 on a one bedroom to $44,000 on a one bedroom. On a two bedroom, they're going from $56,000 to $68,000, okay? Now, Again, we just talked about the government saying, well, you know, housing accelerator fund, cut the red tape, we'll give you money. So the government is giving money to the city of Toronto. And Matt says, well, hold on a minute. Just when you thought the rates went up a lot in May, right? In May, they just went up. They're going up again in June. They're going up again in June. This was just a month ago. Why are they going up again in June? And they're going up. um, So now they're now up 42% over the last year or an extra $15,000 for a one bedroom or $24,000 for a two bedroom. And why are they going up as of June? Because they have to, it has to do with bill 185. So they're raising them due to bill 185. Well, what is bill 185? Uh, (laughs) Bill 185. And I quote is cutting red tape to build more housing act 2024. So 
they're cutting the red tape, but they're raising the taxes and the fees in order to implement the policy and passing it on to the developers and thinking that's going to get more housing built off the ground. Meanwhile, they collect the check from the government. The government's just stroke them a check and they just raise the development cost charges. Uh, you, you you literally can't make this up in Toronto and to think this doesn't get passed on to an end user. So here I am. I'm here in, Van in Vancouver, guys. You guys know that. Um, the BC government has put through all this uh, multiplex zoning and all single family lots. They've then uh, created these TOD areas, transit oriented event, uh, development areas. Basically, if you're within 800 meters of a SkyTrain, they have to allow a certain amount of density. So every every city has to update their zoning uh, bylaws and plans to accommodate this. And so I'm going to give you a breakdown here from the city of Burnaby. Okay, the city of Burnaby for um, high rise density um, just increased their development cost charges. They took them from three thousand dollars a unit to twenty five thousand dollars a unit. Uh, they then added a new charge called an ACC, an amenity contribution, going from which was previously zero, is now $13,500. And they did increase and added the Metro Vancouver uh, sewer charge fee of $14,000. So in the city of Burnaby, you have $50,000 in new increased fees and taxes on a development. Okay, let me break this down in very simple terms for you. You just added $50,000 in new fees, which for a one bedroom condo, let's just assume a one bedroom condo in Burnaby goes for about five, new construction, 500 to 600,000 in that kind of range. In that kind of range is kind of what you're going to pre sell a one bedroom condo. So by adding $50,000 in new fees, that's basically 10% of the, of the purchase price, of the end price. 10% 10 of that is just development increased development cost charges i'm not talking about what the, what they were before i'm talking about just the increases alone are 10 percent of the cost of the unit and so how is this going to make housing more affordable how is this going to remove the red tape and get more housing built and people say well yes you know it just reflects back in the land value so the seller is just going to have to reduce the land the, the, the price of the land because the developer now has to pay less for the land because they have to factor in all of the taxes and fees that they're going to have to pay when they develop. So the land price needs to come down. But there's a problem. There is a very big problem with that, is that uh, particularly in cities like Metro Vancouver, areas like Metro Vancouver, you have an underlying bid. You have a floor price for single-family houses. And what I mean by that is... Think about a single family house. There's so much demand there from these, you know, young families and people still want to have a single family house. We don't build new single family houses every year. They're kind of contracting and, and being redeveloped into high rises and, and low rise apartment buildings, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a natural floor for single family detached prices. So I'll give you an example. Um, you know, you could either sell it to an end user. You could sell a house in Burner V to an end user for $2 million dollars. Or you can sell it to a developer for 2.5. But there's really not a lot of room because if you start adding up more and more of these taxes, yes, you push the land price down for a developer, but at some point it reaches the scenario where it actually makes more sense for the homeowner just to sell it to an end user for $2 million than it does to sell it to a developer where the price used to be 2.5 and now it's 2.2 or 2.3 for, for a homeowner to, you know, wait you know because think about how complicated it is to do these land assembly plays and sell to a developer right they typically have very long subject periods they have long closes a lot of times you have to wait a year year and a half for your money and so and and the developers can tie up sites for six months so as a homeowner you can go through the painful process of assembling with all of your neighbors you know to try to get 2.3 million from a developer or you just sell to an end user for $2 million and collect your cash in six weeks. So there's a natural floor. So basically what I'm saying is by keep adding up onto the taxes, you crush the viability of new development. And basically no new density actually gets built. And so this is really what's happening is, uh, again, all these cities. So again, I'll give you more examples. Uh, we just had the District of North Vancouver. Um, so again, the BC government came out and says you have to 
uh, allow fourplexes in all your single family lots. The district of North Vancouver just said, mm, no, thank you. We don't want that. We're going to reject it. You guys can take us to court. Uh, we saw the same thing in West Vancouver. Uh, I grew up in Steveston in Richmond, BC. Uh, so in Steveston, it's technically in the TOD, transit-oriented development, so to allow high-rises. So this little Steeston uh, village is now working on getting a five-year exemption out of those TODs. So all the sort of gatekeepers are working together again to sort of uh, prevent additional housing density. This is why housing affordability, when politicians come out and talk about housing affordability, it's all a lie. It is all a lie. All of these governments are desperate, broke they all need tax revenues. They're all desperate for tax revenues. And they extract it in the golden goose. They extract it in the only way that they seemingly know how to do is by passing it through onto new housing development. And so again, if 30%, if 30% of the cost of new housing is taxes and rising, how does that make new housing supply more affordable or easy or more economical to build. It does not. And so basically the government, again, the federal government is stroking checks and giving them right to the very gatekeepers that are saying, yeah, okay, don't worry. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll remove, we'll remove the zoning. We'll allow, we'll allow a developer to build a 20 story tower where he could used to only build a five story tower. We'll allow it to go from 5 to 20, but we're going to raise the taxes and the fees so much so that it becomes uneconomical to actually build that, but we'll, and we'll, we'll take the money and run. Uh, this is, it's just, it is actually unbelievable. I can't believe people aren't out, are completely outraged at what is going on. The problem is government, and everybody keeps looking to the government to fix the problem that they have in themselves created and are enabling. Uh, it is it is incredibly impressive. And so that's, that's kind of my rant on that, is I think that uh, people will continue to be sold the false lie of housing affordability. Uh, and we've talked about it, and Trudeau talked about it last week, which was, you know, again, everybody wants housing affordability, but nobody wants their house to become affordable. And that's clearly what we're seeing. Everybody might want density and you know, but they just don't want it in their backyard. And so we're still going around in circles. The government is just stroking more checks, but nothing is actually going to change. And that is the biggest flaw. And again, uh, hopefully people are paying attention and make sure you're paying attention when you go to the ballot box. As always, hope that helped. And we'll see you next week.